Hey everybody, how are you? This is Dr. Antonio Arnold and Sheila Arnold. I'm um, going to get people, uh, everybody, with five minutes till, or four minutes till, just give everybody an opportunity to join us on the broadcast. And also for me the opportunity to share in a couple of locations. I got my, finally got my old, my PC connected. There we go. I'm going to make this from appendix to the top. Did you share it with me? Yeah, I, I, I shared with you. I sure did. I don't see it. I mean, you don't see it. It's not possible. It's not possible? You should see it. I tagged it. You see it. Go. Refresh your, remember your, remember your uh, phone. Try refreshing it. And ho hopefully, um, Facebook algorithm with alert my friends they're not very um user friendly sometimes i mean back in the days people didn't know i'm like right out of that mm -hmm. uh unfortunately that's not always the case so what i'll do i'm gonna share go ahead and share on okay, uh, on your page okay you got it mm -hmm. all right i'm gonna share it to a number of groups i control and uh They go show Big Brothers listening in every day. And we can't be a Big Brother. But Big Brother controls the algorithm. They have cameras everywhere, just like the CCP. They're watching. And I'm watching them. God is watching. It's not like a told them so you got the sound man and the cameraman and mm -hmm. don't have that kind of resources. Perhaps not yet. But it's not necessary though. Mm -hmm. I don't need it. There you go. All you need is a few faithful ones who will share. Yep. And guys, please just please subscribe, share, share with your friend. That's something we don't do enough. I, I express my little frustration is early. It's not really frustration, but just concerns that we're not sharing each other content. We're not sharing each other. Um, social media is designed for us to share ideas together with friends and families. If you love me, share my content. <laughs> I'm still working on it, a few things. We're trying to reach as many people because one thing about the gospel, we have to share with everybody. Can the I get? Word, the word said that who, who has an ear to hear, let them hear. So everybody's not going to hear anyway. That's true. That's but just the one who came on, mm -hmm. their purpose, that's their purpose to be. Right now, I'm just trying to reach all my channels. I have like a number of channels. And somebody chime in? Looks like your thing frozen. Yeah, it sure did. Look at tap, tap it. I'm the IT guy in this family. <laughs> IT engineer. Okay, yeah, yeah. And if you guys want a degree in that, I suggest, I highly recommend you do it. Because that's a going thing now. One of many career going. BBA, and now to the new Petersburg Richmond. Just bear with it, guys. We're waiting on a few folks. And you chime in, just state your name and where you're from and 
Thank you for joining us. Let's know who you are. We love meeting new people. Oh, that's probably me. Yeah, that's you. You can say something. Anybody from Sussex, Virginia? Yeah, they're going to play the replay, so that's all good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Today is Saturday, July 23rd. It will be also air on YouTube, LinkedIn, and Instagram. But somebody needs this. Someone needs this to hear this, what the Spirit is saying. The Spirit is the Word of God. Why? Because the, the word said God, the word is spirit. Yeah, that's you. That's you, honey. Mm -hmm. I remember we were in paparazzi a lot. I remember we had up to 100 people at a time. And we were doing that lately around this evening time. Mm -hmm. Sometime 8, sometime 9 o'clock. And folks will show up. We're in a different age now, honey. Yeah, yeah. We're going to do our part. Yeah, they just may. Yeah. That's right, because we're not by ourselves. It's going to plug into a few places that allow ministries to uh, utilize their their platform. And I pray this is going to be a blessing. It's now 6.03. I think we should go ahead and get started. I'm going to hit one more spot. Try to come out a little early next, more earlier than usual next time just for preparation. Yeah. And to distribute, distribute. Yeah. Distribute. Uh, come on, can you do me a favor, honey? Okay. Can you share yours to Norfolk, way to Waverly? Classified, because that's where um, a friend of ours located. Okay. Here. Yeah. I'm trying to broaden. But like I said, I'm not just going to reach out to, you know, local... Uh, you said to where? Norfolk to Waverly Classified. Group. Group. Yeah. That, you're on the right platform. Norfolk to Waverly. Mm-hmm. Norfolk at where? Uh, Dinwiddie and a couple of Chester. Chester Classified? Mm-hmm. Because they allow, some places allow ministry to, to, uh, mm -hmm. to record, to play live. Did we try city? You can try that. We trying we trying to get the message out. Hey Carl, how you doing, nephew? It's good to see you. Hey Carl. Thanks for joining us. This we afternoon. really appreciate you. Uh, let's see, any other platform that I control? Yes, we started in the moment. Hit Prince George. We're talking about faith today. That's the message for today. We're going to talk about, discuss about faith. You're welcome to chime in. You're welcome to um, type in messages. Um, this is a dialogue, not a more like a monologue, where we can all share and have a conversation. Yes. We'd like to hear your comments. And all comments are good. All comments are good. We're all in this together. Yep. Good. In the bottom, that's the bottom line. Right. I think I'm done with that. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Let's see. Right here. I shared at 20 lo locations. How's everybody doing, Carl? How Angie and, and Bobby are doing? It's a few seconds off, but it's all right.
All right. Let's see if the camera on it. I'm going to get a little closer to you, honey. All right. We're coming to you live stream right here in beautiful Chesterfield County or Chester, mostly Chester, Virginia. And we're just reaching out everywhere. It doesn't matter if you're in North Carolina, Sussex, New York, New Jersey. It doesn't matter if you're in Florida or Indonesia. We love you. And we just love to share God's word. Today is Friday. No, Saturday. Why am I saying this? I almost say Friday. Today is Saturday. It's Saturday. Mm -hmm. It's Saturday. This is the day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Yes. So our lesson, before we start our lesson, uh, we want to start with a prayer. Mm -hmm. We can start with prayer. Yes. Let us pray. Most Heavenly Father, Jehovah, we come before you this morning, this afternoon. With thanksgiving in our hearts once again, with our heart open to you, Lord. We ask, Lord, that you will come before us today to help us teach a, a, a lesson on faith. A faith lesson on faith is such an important lesson because you are the key to our faith. You are the author and finisher of our faith. You are the one who set things in motion, Lord. And, Lord, we ask that people will be receptive to hear, that they will have a calm spirit, that their minds will be clear. And Lord, we ask that the words of our mouth and the meditation of our heart be acceptable in thy sight. For you are Lord, our Redeemer and our Master. We call it all joy. And only the people that comes in, Lord, are the ones you have set apart to be here. And we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 All right. So uh, there's the three of us, two or three are gathered in his name. He's in, He's in the midst. Again, uh, we got, if you have your Bible, I always allow people to have their Bibles with them to verify, confirm what I what we share. That is biblical truth. Um, that Because uh, most of everything we talk about is going to come from Scripture and my re and research. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I thank God for research and education because I'm a firm believer in it. Uh, many of you who don't know, I have attended a number of schools, field, uh, seminaries, and God has given me revelation on what he wanted me to share with his people, and that's why he inspired me to write this book. But I'm, it's called, We Are Living in the Finished Work of Christ. And I hope this makes sense. It is, We Are Living in the Finished Work of Christ. It's a great book, one of my masterpieces, that God has given me his word to share. Definitely supported by scripture. It's not what I say, it's what the Lord said. And also, breaking the chain, the bondage of the tradition of the church, because we got a lot of false with traditions that's hurting people. We got a lot of people worshiping every other things other than Jesus Christ, and they think it's Christianity, and it's not. And we also, my military experience, Hurricane Katrina and I, and I know this is a reverse, y'all forgive me for that. Hurricane Katrina and I, it's my experience while stationed in New Orleans, being part of the Air National Guard, Army Reserve, and Active Army, Active Air Force. All right, that being said about that, we're going to go ahead and get started mm -hmm. on faith. How many of you do you have faith? Do you have faith, honey? I have faith. I have great faith. I have great faith, too. I believe. Some people call it believe. I believe. Mm -hmm. I, I have faith. And I believe that Jesus Christ is my Lord and Savior. Yes, I, do too. I believe the Father Jehovah, Elohim, Yahweh, has sent Jesus, the only, his only begotten son, to a sin-sick world to redeem it. I believe that. And we're going to talk about the, everything that governs our faith and how faith we come to understand faith. Mm -hmm. So what faith is it a belief? So what is faith, honey? Faith is something that things hope for. Yeah. Well, things not seen. Coming from Hebrews chapter 11 and 1. Amen. The word of God let us know that faith is some, is a substance of things hoped for. You can't grasp it. You can't see it. And what else? Evidence of things not seen. So we can't see it. <clears throat> we can't grasp it. It's things hoped for. That's the part of the thing I like. It's a substance of things hoped. What is your hope, ladies and gentlemen? Brothers and sisters, what is your hope? You hope that you have a grateful career? Do you hope that you are redeemed by the blood of Christ? Are uh, you hope that you will be in, received in heaven, in heaven? Or do you hope that 
that good get good enough morning that you will be in paradise with the rest of us? What is your hope? Yes. Think about the things you hope for, the things you like to do in life, the things you desire. We all desire to go to heaven. Yes, we do. We don't want to go to the place of darkness. We don't want to go to the place of everlasting fire, the lake of fire. So where are we look for? Our hope is in Christ. That's mm -hmm. where our hope is. And that's where we stand to stand focused as Christians. Yes. As real, true Christians of the faith. The faith is a belief or trust. So we it's trust in Jesus Christ. In a religious sense. Absolutely. And it's, it is applied especially to God, the Father, God, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. There you have. Anybody trust Jesus? Anybody believe in Jesus? Everybody believe in his Father sent his only begotten Son? I believe. I believe his word is spirit. I believe. I believe he's looking for a church without a spot or wrinkle. I believe. So what is the effects of hearing of the good word of God? What is the effect of hearing God's word? According to Romans 10, 17, so then faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. You hear that, brothers and sisters? Faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. That is the effect of hearing the word of God. So whenever you hear the word of God, that strengthens your faith. Because that's where our faith, that's the key to our faith. That's one of the key, part, the more than key, important keys of our faith. Romans 10, 17. Write that down. Romans 10, 17. And I can type that in there. Mm -hmm. That's why I brought my computer. Because <laughs> love is, because love is, love, 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 Hebrew 11, 6 says, without faith it is impossible to please God. So if you don't have faith, it's impossible to please God. So the question is, um, I might ask is, are uh, people who have fear and words have faith? Do they have faith if you worry? Uh oh, uh oh, that's something else. If you worry and have fear, is there? Do you have? Do you have faith in God? Or do you have anxiety? Or when the when the news comes on in the morning and tell you some some news about a person uh, uh, that gets you all upset? You know, price of gas going up. We all know that. Their 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 uh, inflation stock market is going to crash. Has crashed. Mm -hmm. Do you panic and pull all your money out, or do you hold do you hold firm to and trust God? Because let me just finish up eleven chapter one. Okay, mm -hmm. okay, verse one. Mm -hmm. All right, because a lot of times. It's, 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 first of all, it's impossible to please God without faith. Yes, it is. First of all, we can't do nothing without faith. But it's even more impossible to please Him. Don't you want to please God? Some people don't have faith at all. Mm -hmm. Some people don't even believe in God. Exactly. There's a lot. Now, truth be, I mean, let me be a little bit more transparent. There's a lot of people who don't believe in God. And I'm a firm believer in mission work. I'm a firm of. of a firm believer and going out on missions and training, but we need training to train train people so we can go out and see our own. Because there's a lot of people who are not who have yet to hear the gospel mm -hmm. or just don't believe in the gospel at all. And it may take just one person to sit back there and, and talk to them and say, "Hey, do you know without a shadow of doubt that you're going to heaven?" Mm -hmm. You got folks who don't believe in God who are atheists who thinks they're going to heaven. They really do. Mm -hmm. Or they're, not, they're just saying in their mind they cease to exist. That's not having faith. And there's some people who act on saying, hey, I did it on my own. I know it was the grace of God we got where we are. Mm -hmm. Why? Because we practice faith each and every day. Ever since we've been together, our relationship is based on faith. Yes. Our entire marriage is based on faith. If you're a young couple, your marriage should be based on faith. Amen? Yeah. Okay. So you know, if you want to please God, one of the very things that say right here in Scripture, it's impossible. So, let me see. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1. Now, faith is... Wait, well, now that's not what I want. That's not what I want. What's the fourth Scripture? Read that Scripture again. 1070. 1070. So then faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. 
That's where you got to hear the word. You got to hear the word of God. How can you have faith when you don't hear the word of God? Right. And faith in the word of God comes from the scriptures. Now, who gives the scriptures? You're getting the scriptures right now from a preacher who is assigned to do that. A pastor, an elder, a theologian can get the word. Those who are truly ordained and those truly have faith of this in the word, in the spirit of God. Because you got theologians who don't believe. You got pastors who don't believe. You got bishops who don't believe. That's another topic. But it's impossible to please God. Go ahead, Sheila. Is faith in Christ necessary to receive salvation? Read that again. Is faith in Christ necessary to receive salvation? Anybody want to take on that question? Those who play back, you can answer those who have played back. I'm going to say one thing. It is necessary to, to, in order to receive salvation. You've got to have faith in Christ. Christ is the author of our faith. Christ is the deliverer of our salvation and the kingdom of heaven. Without Christ in it, there is no salvation. No other faith offers salvation as much as Christianity does through Jesus Christ. And I mean through Jesus Christ alone. Alright? Through his Father. Okay? So through the Father. Through Jesus Christ to the Father. Alright? So let me, let's get a let's get a witness on this one. John you want to read that? John 336. Let's read it. He that believes on the Son has everlasting life, and he that believes not the Son shall not see life. But the wrath of God abides on him. Let's, let's, let's break this down. Let's understand something here. It is necessary to believe in Christ. Yes. More than just saying, I just believe in the, the name of Christ. I just believe that on the history of Christ. I believe, you know what I've heard, but I, I don't really believe him. You know? He that believes on the Son have everlasting life. That's by action. Not just by words. It's by deeds. And he that believes not on the Son shall not see light, but the wrath of God. The only thing that keeping God's wrath and his curse from punishing us is Jesus Christ. Jesus shed his blood at Calvary, Golgotha, in Jerusalem, on the crucifix for us. Each drop of blood is for generations that deserve to be punished. But he took it upon himself. He's our redeemer. And we should look to, look to him. With open hearts. And humility. With love. And with joy. Mm -hmm. But not only that. Commitment. So. Those of us who don't believe. Who say we don't believe. They believe it not. Shall not see life. So you're not. Worthy, you're not going to receive eternal life. If you don't believe in Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, if you don't believe in his righteousness and what he has done, and you don't accept his saving grace, and I'm talking not by word, but by deeds, by total surrender, you're not going to receive everlasting life. I have to say it this way. You're not going to receive the kingdom of God. Those who do such things will not receive the kingdom of God. That's another scripture. Mm -hmm. You're not going to see, but the wrath of God, you're going to receive the first curses that he had waiting for the people before Christ was crucified because God was ready to put on judgment. So you add judgment to yourself, just like this abortion thing. This woman said all these unfriendly things about God. Talking about she don't believe in God. I pray to God that for her that she repent for her statements. Mm -hmm. Because she said a lot of harsh things. A lot of people. You got people who are witches. Who don't believe in God. Who don't believe in Jesus. And will not. And re utterly refuse. To accept his saving grace. But the wrath will come. And only his children. Who are called by his name. Who have hunger and humble and pray. Who have turned from their wicked way. We're here. From mm -hmm. here. Okay. Next, next one. So we understand. In faith in Christ and that for to receive salvation, it is. A lot of folks will come out there and give you false religion saying, 
you don't need Christ. In order to be to receive salvation, you don't need Christ. You need other things. All right, go ahead, Jim. How are, how are Christians justified? I'm going to read the scripture. You want to tackle a comment on that? You want me to read the scripture? I'll read the scripture. Okay, I'll, read, I'll give the commentary. Go ahead. Romans 3, 28. Therefore, we conclude that a man is justified by faith without the deeds of the law. Did y'all hear that? It's, it's, it's all just plain. It just said we, we are justified by faith. The word said we just about that faith. And we don't, without the deed of the law, the law is gone, so we don't need to. It was fulfilled. It was fulfilled mm -hmm. across. And yet we try to relive the law. And we cannot live the Hebraic law. We, the law was already carried out by the Redeemer. We are not the Redeemers. Only Christ is the Redeemer. We get it wrong on the pulpit all the time, trying to get people to live, read, and live the messianic law of Moses. And that's not so. Christ has fulfilled and finished. That's why this book called We Are Living in the Finished Work. It is the finished work. We are justified by the finished great work through his saving grace. That's why we're here. That's how we're still here. Lord have mercy. We're justified by faith. You know, Martin Luther King, Mark, not, not Martin Luther King, but Martin Luther, a, a, who was the founder of the Lutheran Church, a little seminary theology to you, from what I've learned. He realized this as a priest in his later years. And he's been a priest for a long time. Matter of fact, he was teaching in one of the Catholic Church seminaries. When he came to the revelation, and I'm telling you because I, I studied I read the book. I did the research. He came to a revelation, which is what I call the Great Awakening. Mm -hmm. Okay, the Great Awakening moment. And he realized we are justified by faith. Not by uh, giving indulgence. Not by paying, having people pay us for prayer. Not by works. By doing, you sing in this choir, you operate in this department, you do this department. You know how people, the people have a wrong theology when it comes to that because they believe by works we are saved. Mm -hmm. And that's not true. The saving work was already committed by Jesus Christ himself, committed, who is committed to by, by, by the Father to get the work done. We can't do what Jesus do. So we're justified by faith in him. That's where who is our justifier. Jesus is the justifier. That's why we're justified. Mm -hmm. But we have to have faith to be justified. Martin Luther talked talk about type of those 99 problems, some the problems on that wall in protest against the Catholic Church because of their wrongful teachings about works. So if you're in the ministry and your pastor, your bishop, your elder, your cardinal, your pope, your archbishop, and your uh, patriarch, which is the highest level equivalent to the pope in the in um, the uh, Eastern Orthodox Church, they got it wrong because they're looking at work as an effort. You are justified by faith, ladies and gentlemen. You are justified by faith. The only reason they don't tell you that because they want to keep you under control. That's false religion. Mm -hmm. I don't care what brand you call it on the building. But the, anything else you want to add, huh? Um, God teach church. Have Amen, faith. Carl. According to the Bible definition, according to Galatians 5, 22, 23, real faith comes from the Spirit of God, the fruit of the Holy Spirit. Amen. You read Galatians 3, 11, right? I can read it. You want me to come back? No, I read Go ahead. Go ahead. What effect does faith have on the life of the righteous? That's Galatians 3, 11. Mm-hmm. Let me read it, read it. Keep on. But, but that no man is justified by the law in the sight of God, it is, it is evident for the just shall live by faith. Can I get a witness on that? Anybody want to uh, add to that? What effect does faith have one's life of the righteousness, of the righteous? We're being the righteous, okay? Mm -hmm. 
what effects does faith have on the life of the righteous? Anybody want to take a guess? Um, want to share? Amen. Well, I, can, I like I said, like, as if Galatians has mentioned, and there's many more scriptures, but we, I got to hit because it's covered up right here too. Mm -hmm, I know. Okay. Galatians makes it plain. No, that, but no, that, that no man is justified by law. That's in the new covenant, guys. We are not justified by law. We are not justified by bylaws. We are not justified by works. We're not justified by your pastor. We're not justified by your programs. We're not justified by speaking in tongues. We're not justified by hooping and hollering. We're not justified doing backflips and cartwheel. We're justified by faith. Amen? Amen. So stop looking. Let's stop looking to uh, program worship and looking at faith. Let's look at focus on faith in Christ. Mm -hmm. Okay? Now, Hebrews chapter 11, verse 3 says, if you have your Bible, turn with me and just follow along. If not, just type it in. For by faith, we understand that the world were framed by the word of God. Mm -hmm. Word of God. Okay? I just want to emphasize that. So that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. Can somebody interpret that for me? What you get out of it? Got anything out of it? The faith was framed by the word of God. It was not framed by things. It's not exactly. And it's not framed by the world. By the world understanding, by the world word politics, mm -hmm. by the world world scientists, not by the world CDC, mm -hmm. not the world's universities or colleges. It is not framed by neither one, but by the word of God. They dispute the word of God so much that people believe in what their ideology, but not the word. Mm -hmm. And also that, that things which were not made things which do appear. It still goes back. Faith is a substance of things mm -hmm. hoped for and evidence of things not seen. Things that you have not yet seen. You see, God see your potential that you don't see. Mm -hmm. God saw my potential that I didn't even see in myself. He saw my tomorrow where I didn't even see in myself at that time. Mm -hmm. And it's watched the manifestation of his grace through faith. Mm -hmm. It is why we are, that's my wife and our relationship is by faith. Mm -hmm. I have no idea that we will be together. We met, I wanted her for my wife then. But it wasn't the time. Then we met again, and then God put it. To, was it was I was ready. I was ready. He saw my potential later on. She saw my potential later on. It's like the thing is breaking up. I don't know. Mm -hmm. But anyway, that's basically where it is. Let's go to Hebrew chapter seven. Let me chapter eleven, verse seven. And there's a lot. If you notice in your Bible in the book of Hebrews, especially particularly in chapter eleven, you'll see a great deal of scripture. In regards to faith. It is so much food right here on this table. I mean, it would take you and me some time to chew it. Just digest it and enjoy it. Because it is a good meal. Mm -hmm. This is what a good meal tastes like. All right? By faith. In verse um, 7 of chapter 11 of Hebrews. By faith, Noah being warned of God, of things not seen as yet, move with fear, prepared an ark to the saving of his house, by the which he condemned the world and became heirs of righteousness, which is by faith. Mm -hmm. Anybody want to share something, on the, a commentary on that? Mm -hmm. What is your understanding? I love it. I love it. Thank you, Carl. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Carl. Yes. First of all, it says that he was warned, warned of God of things not seen. Mm -hmm. That's what moves him. The warning of God. Yes. And he yes. means fear, which is not means being scared, means reverence. 
he reverenced God and did what God asked him to do. Amen. Oh, I was going to type in, I'm typing Hebrews. So that way, if someone, if you have, you don't have your Bible, you're going to refer back to what we talked about. Either replay it <coughs> or just, uh, you'll see for yourself. I'll put type in a little bit more later on. But anyway, so God revealed unto Moses what's going to happen to the world, the known world. Mm -hmm. He's told him the flood is coming. He told him, he warned him, just like God warned us on the book of Revelation. Mm -hmm. So judgment is coming. He also let us know that it's going to be a thousand year reign. He know, let us know that people are going to turn, it's going to be a great fall away from the church, mm -hmm. from God's church. Not talking about the man's church. I'm talking about God's church. Okay? He warned Moses, I mean Noah. And the people didn't listen. Noah was ready. Built an ark. Noah did what? What did he do? He did what God told him to do. He did exactly what Jehovah God told him. Okay? And he saved his entire household by that action. Mm -hmm. Now what happened to the rest of the people that didn't believe? They drowned. It. They drowned. They received the judgment of God. Mm -hmm. And that's exactly what happened. And guess what? God condemned the world, which he's going to do again. Mm -hmm. He's going to do, he's going to condemn the world because the world has turned away from his righteousness. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about the United Nations. I'm talking about the United States, the EU, and the rest of the planet. And it became, and guess what? Through our obedience and trust and faith, we're going to be, Noah became heirs of righteousness. I want to be the part of that heirs of righteousness. Mm -hmm. My wife wants to be part of that world heir of righteousness. My question to you, which one of you wants to be heirs of righteousness? If you want to be the heirs of righteousness, type in heirs of righteousness right now. Give me some drink of water. Heirs of righteousness. Amen. Let's go ahead and move on to Hebrews 11. Four. Go ahead and read that shield. My faith Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain, by which he obtained witness that he was righteous. God testified of his gifts and by, and by he that being dead yet speaketh. You remember the story in Genesis about Cain and Abel, the two brothers, the first two sons of Adam and Eve. You know what I say? Adam mm -hmm. and Eve. Mm -hmm. The beginning of humanity on earth, the known world. God, Abel, has offered a beautiful gift to God. Both brothers were tasked to lift up to God a wonderful gift. And Abel, God received Abel's gift. Let me, and I'm going to read it here again. He, a more excellent, Abel offered unto God a more excellent you hear that? That's the highest compliment. A more excellent sacrifice than what? Cain. So that means Cain hadn't really provided the sacrifice or the gift that God wanted him to have. Yes, there's been some technical issues mm -hmm. going on. Mm -hmm. Can you see me? Yeah, it went out. Okay, it did went out. Yeah. Let me see. No, I don't see her. I don't see Carl. And I'll tell you, um, lately this signal's been kind of bad, but uh, hopefully uh, things will get back in order because I see myself jumping too. Or mm -hmm. That's why I like to have uh, with the Wi-Fi. It could be the Wi-Fi signal. Uh, could be a number of things. Okay. But we're going to praise God anyway, and whatever it happens, we going to trust God that he will make it right where you'll be able to see it clearly. And hopefully that's always the replay as well. So, so, Abe provided a most excellent sacrifice, okay? Then came, and which attained a witness that he was righteous. It was his attitude. Mm -hmm. His attitude was when right standing before God. Cain wasn't. It just wasn't that the gifts that Cain provided wasn't good enough. 
It's just his attitude. And our attitude is being judged by God too because God look at our attitude in worship. He look at our attitudes at giving. It doesn't matter what you give, but if your attitude ain't right, he's not going to receive it. And you, know, you, can put it all, you can put a million dollars in the pulpit and on the basket. If it's not in right standing with God, then God doesn't want it. God don't need your money physically anyway. He wants your reasonable service. That's your offering. But that's another story. Mm -hmm. That Anyway, and we'll talk about tithing and offering in another last segment. But, but here's the thing. By which he obtained witness that he was righteous. Abel definitely was righteous, and God testified his gifts, okay? And he and by he that being dead, yes, but being dead, he was killed by his brother. Mm -hmm. His brother was highly jealous, and his brother murdered him. But God honored Abel, and God heard through his blood his cries. Mm -hmm. And God did render judgment unto Abel. Okay? But he received his gift. We got to have that same kind of attitude with any gift we give in, in, in regard to, and in, in, in by faith into God. Okay? We have to be in right standing before we even give. Mm -hmm. Not what, like I said, don't give grudgingly. Yeah. If you want to give, give and leave it at that. Don't worry about what everybody's saying around you. Don't worry about trying to measure up to everybody. You know your situation. You want to give someone a coat or a jacket or you make a donation of food or you want to make a monetary gift to a, to a nonprofit organization that's helping the poor in the name of Jesus, that's fine too. If you want to give to a ministry that is doing the righteous work of God, don't worry about how other people will look at you. You just give and you go about your business. That's it. Because God's the one who's going to be the one who's going to either receive your gift of heart or reject it. Don't worry. It's not for your pastor because you're not looking to your pastor as God. You're not looking to your bishop as God. You're not looking to your elder. I see people are doing that though. People are doing that. You need to stop. Look to Jesus Christ. Look to his Father. Get stay in righteousness, grace setting with the Holy Spirit which is the word of God. Go ahead and read, uh, did I cover, did I say enough right there? Yeah, Hebrews 7, Hebrews 11, 17. All right. Faith Abraham, when he was cried, offered up Isaac, and he that has received the promise offered up his only begotten son. Now, here's an example that God provided right in from the book of Genesis. By faith, Abraham, when he tried to offer Isaac, you remember the story. That God told Isaac to, to take his son to that mountain and to sacrifice him, make an offering to him. Right before he tried to do it, God stopped him and he provided him a good, a good offering. What was that offering called? That was a lamb. What did that remind us of? Fast forward a few hundred years. That lamb was the son of God. The lamb of God was to be offered. That was a lesson that God in future time was going to send his only begotten son as the final sacrifice. Can I get a witness? Amen. Jesus Christ is the final sacrifice. God Jehovah was testing Isaac's faith when he ordered him to offer his son, his only son. All right? And I'm sorry, Abraham. Sorry. I mean, I was right. Yeah. He offered Isaac. Yeah, he offered Isaac, yeah. His only son. This man is older. He was older. He was no young man. Mm -hmm. He offered his son. And God stepped in. Because now he's like, okay, now I get now you understand how it feels for a father to put his son up for for our sacrifice. Can you imagine how it would feel? How Jehovah felt when he offered his son, his only son, 
to save us. I can't imagine that. I can't imagine giving up my children like that. I can't imagine putting my daughter on the altar to be sacrificed. But Abraham was faithful to do that. And ever since that, that hadn't happened since. So guys, stop offering sacrifices when the only sacrifice, the Lamb of God, was finished. All right? Okay. That's 17. Hebrews 1, 11, 8, please. By faith, Abraham, when he was called to go out into a place which he should have, should after receive for inheritance, obeyed, and he went out to known whither he went. Amen. Amen. It takes, it's not hard to have faith. It's not hard at all. And then I'm going to go into details about it in a few minutes. But I want to share some of my story. My wife and I opened a, a small store. We started off in our house. As my wife told you the story yesterday mm -hmm. about a printing business that God showed me to do. And I, learned, I learned computer operations. I learned telecommunication. I learned uh, desktop publishing. I learned uh, computer operations. I know how to take a computer apart, put it back together, get it working. I know how to do software. God showed me how to do all these things while attending a classroom. He did. And we opened our first store in 19... And in fact, it was August 1996 mm -hmm. that we started Arnold's Creation. Arnold's Creation was started from our home on um, 3911 Lee Boulevard, Dinwiddie County. Mm -hmm. That's where it was born. We had a license. Um, we started getting, obtaining equipment. And we got it started. And we, we produced a lot of things from T-shirts to booklets, binderies, um, pictures, pictures, personalized pictures. I mean, we would take photography. We were doing photography. We were taking for photographs and adding other people to it who may have missed, lost a loved one. And they wanted it as if they were there. We've done that. Uh, we duplicated. We could repair, like digitally repaired um, photographs. Somebody ringing the phone? Chairman yeah. know better not to call me on during our broadcast. I already told him how to broadcast. Oh my goodness, that is so. I'm going to ignore it. Hopefully, it'll pop out and hang it up. But we're going to continue on. But anyway, long story short, um, by faith, guys, it was a faith walk because God showed me in a dream how to get everything done, and we went ahead and went forth. Now, was it easy? No. Did I did? Now, have I looked for? Uh, what's that thing called? Loans, startup loans, um, obtain capital. Uh, and my wife already told the story how we utilized her her retirement. I promised mm -hmm. I would retire her, mm -hmm. and I kept my promise. But like I said, I had no experience in business. Only thing I did was restaurant work and sold life insurance, and that's as far as I know. But God showed me through this how to operate, build a business, operate business plan, uh, come up with a plan. Uh, work with people who who knows and find and and make things happen, and we did for two years. I mean, for two years we were in place, mm -hmm. and and it was the grace of God. It was a lesson that could it have gone bigger, and it was we had some success, and we're still practicing those success. But it was just for God for God to teach me to the, at the level where I could understand what I need to do. Which led up to this point now, why we're here, why um, we're living a life. Now I understand invest, what it means by investment. I understand what it means to sacrifice. I understand what it means to, um, by faith, know and don't know what the future holds. When you open your doors at your store, when you open your door at any kind of business, you don't know how people are going to react. And and it was just a faith walk. Mm -hmm. And next day, and we for and we had some success. I mean, I was booming. Had to, I had to make deposits every day. She was at work, mm -hmm. and we were we were doing substantial. We were averaging five hundred dollars every other what out every other hour. Mm -hmm. I was depositing thousands of dollars. At least still this close to street, mm -hmm. and that hurt our business. But it, that's another story too. Mm -hmm. But we we trusted God and went by faith. I could have still kept on working a traditional job, but it was God who showed me my destiny. And I was focused, and I believe in it. Mm -hmm. 
So I went on to continue to trust God and continue to move forward. Regardless of what's in front of me, what's to the left of me, to the right of me, and behind me. I was focused on fulfilling God's wishes. Mm -hmm. Okay? And it was for my our benefit. Because if it weren't for that, I wouldn't have known the stuff I know. And I'm telling you, I'm here to tell you, I went to college. My college degree didn't teach me all that. It didn't. All right? But I'm also... By faith, the Lord blessed me to have a beautiful wife to see my potential. Amen? Amen? The Bible teaches us to seek ye first the kingdom of heaven. You know, to seek ye first the kingdom of God and all his righteousness shall be added unto you. I believe that. You should believe that. Amen? Amen. So we'll go ahead. Uh, anything you want to ask you? Mm -hmm. Amen. And I think she'll cover with great detail yesterday about our business startup mm -hmm. and our life and our trials and tribulations. And yes, it was hard and there were some challenges. And we faced we face some um, obstacles. But by faith, we kept going. Yeah. So I'm encouraging you. Whatever God puts in front of you, I don't care what it is. You keep going by faith. Mm -hmm. I thought you were going to say something. Because yeah. I want to give you some example of people of faith. All right? People who have faith. By faith, Martin Luther King led the civil rights movement without violence. By faith, Benjamin Banneker planned and designed the construction of the nation's capital. I'm talking about Washington, D.C., by faith, James 410 improved the sales on ship and became the first African-American self-made millionaire. Did y'all hear what I'm saying? Did you just hear what I just said? I'm going to read the name. James Fortin improved the sale on ships and became the first African-American self-made millionaire. This is back in the 1700s while some people were still enslaved about this man was free. And he was a self-made millionaire in the United States. Look at God. Mm -hmm. Look at God. Faith is a substance of things, of th no, evidence of things not seen but hoped for. Yeah. Louis Lentimer, Lentimer, Lentimer improved the light bulb and the water closet for the rail and road car, railroad cars. Can I get him with it? By faith, George Crumb invented the potato chip. Those potato chips, that those latest potato chip that you love so much, was invented by a black man. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna give the black man some credit. I'm gonna give not just black men, African Americans of African origins, because mm -hmm. we're all Americans. I don't care what the color of the fur. We're all Americans, and we're all God's people. Let's get away from this thing that separates us. Mm -hmm. uh, amen. By faith, Dr. Charles Richard Drew, my frat brother, developed the use of blood plasma, which lasted longer than a whole blood and saved thousands of lives. By faith, my father, John L. Arnold, raised four children by himself. My mother died when I was, when I was four years old. My youngest sister was two. My oldest sister was five. And he raised all five of us by himself. Provided a home provided us an opportunity to achieve an education, an opportunity to, to have self-worth and a career. And here we are. That's by faith. Being a single parent is not an easy task. Mm -hmm. Being raised by a single parent is not an easy task. But that's the way it was. And I can't thank God for my father. God rest him. May he rest in Christ. And he was the first black foreman in a major corporation called Allied Chemicals of Hopewell, or now Allied Signals. He was the first black foreman. Can I get a witness? We, by faith, we started our ministry. Mm -hmm. We started off in North Carolina, the Lord's Church, when I got stationed at Fort Bragg. The Lord's Church, Baptist denomination of Fayetteville. The Church Without Walls ministry, mm -hmm. we started that. When I became pastor of Westminster Presbyterian Church, 
and also returning to the Lord's Church um, as assistant pastor to Pastor Mo Johnson and Pastor Moses. Mm -hmm. That's all about faith, guys. Mm -hmm. Because you think things are tough doesn't mean it's not for your good. It's to build character and prepare you for what God truly has in store for you. And I really believe that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right? What else? Now, these guys are just a small example of faith. You, you have a story to tell. I'm quite sure many of you have a great deal of story to tell. I mean, I wrote three books, Breaking the Chain of Bondage of the Traditional Church. God woke me up and I thought taking notes. My experience in Hurricane Katrina and I from New Orleans, that was definitely a life-changing event. Um, I wrote that. I've never been a writer. And this book right here, I'm sorry. I'm getting a little ahead of myself. We are living in the finished word of Christ. God draw, Jesus save, and the Holy Spirit seal. <clears throat> and I will hold that to my grave. Okay. That's what faith is all about. Yes. Yes, my father was the first black woman in, in Allied Sigma. Amen. Amen. Yes, he was. Yep. My father, we, we all at one point in time are making a difference and making history. Mm -hmm. It just to have to decide what part of history we want to be a part of. I really want to be a, the salvation of the history of God, making a, uh, making a difference in people's lives through the blood, through the Lamb of Jesus Christ. That's my legacy. Mm -hmm. That's the legacy I want to help people reach their potential and also connect them with the, to the body of Christ. That's where we. That's our job. Amen. Amen. So, I just want to encourage each and every one of you to wait and trust in Christ. He will send people to bless you, mm -hmm. as He has done us. Yes. Don't worry about what others say about you, or just see God. Mm -hmm. And I'm just saying it for myself as well, because people are going to talk about you. People are going to belittle you. People call it, your ears going to be itching and that could let you know people are speaking um, not positive about you. Mm -hmm. Don't worry about that. Focus on Jesus Christ and him crucified. And then you're, and let him take care of the rest. We have to come to an understanding of that. My wife and I came to an understanding of that. Mm -hmm. Every day, every time we, we notice, we try different things. We own our own build. We own a building, not a building, the building, but we rent the building. Yeah, we yeah. own a business. We own a number of business. We try a number of buildings, and just like so many people, people laugh at us. Mm -hmm. People talk about us. People uh, speak ill of us, and people didn't even try to encourage us. But I'm here to tell you, what I'm not for the Lord by our side, we wouldn't be where we are. Mm -hmm. That's why I encourage each and every one of you. They seek ye first the kingdom of God. And, and faith the, in Christ. And faith through faith in Christ. And him alone. Not by Buddha. Not by Allah. Not by uh, uh, by any all these other gods that people create. And the God in entertainment. Some people worship, uh, idol worship of celebrities. And that could be a God too. Mm -hmm. So you've got to be careful about that. Remember this guys. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6. About, that without faith, and my wife had read it to you earlier. Mm -hmm. Keep this in mind. This is very important because it's a lot of people who don't have faith at all, who don't believe or have lost their faith because something came in, a challenge came in their life, and they don't believe anymore. They blame God. They blame God for all the situation. They lost a loved one. They blame God. Or they got a, a misfortune. A lot of times, we cause our own misfortune. That being said, we all going to one day see the, either see the kingdom of God or we're going to die. We're all going to die one day. Mm -hmm. We just don't know when, where, or how. Every last one of us have a destiny. God already know our destiny. Mm -hmm. It's up to us to choose wisely <laughs> the direction we go. How we live is up to us. I can sit here and read about faith. To I turn purple, gold, black, yellow, green, it doesn't matter. It's up to you to accept that saving grace. 
It's up to you. I can't make you believe. I can't make you have faith. Only you have this that power to, to decide your choice whether you accept Jesus Christ and him alone. Mm -hmm. It says here in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6. Let me read it, honey. Okay. But without faith it's impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. You see, God is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. And I look at our life and as for the last almost 30 years, 27 years together, uh, 28, what is it together? 28 years? <laughs> 28 years. 20 years. We constantly seek God. We seek God's wisdom every morning, every evening. We seek God's in our actions. We seek God in our doing. We seek God in our writings. Even when we're going through graduate school together and undergraduate school together. I mean, we did we graduated together. We did with the school together. And we just stand out late at night studying and doing our homework. I work another shift. She worked another shift. And we were trying our best. And we helped each other a lot. But it was a challenge. Mm -hmm. It was like a mountain. And we kept God at the forefront to give us the strength, the fortitude, the, 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 the tenacity to keep going. And that's what we have to do. That's what you have to do. You have to seek God in everything you do. Yes. You have to diligently seek Him and His righteousness every day. Not just on Sunday, not just on the Sabbath day or Saturday, not just on that those particular days or what do you call it, Christian education on Wednesday. You seek God and His righteousness. I'm reaching out to somebody right now who's listening. You seek God right now each and every day. Seven days a week, 24 hours a day, 365 days a year, 1,600,000 minutes of a year. You seek him because you because by faith it is possible. You want to please God? You want to please him? And you want to set yourself in right standing before him? You have to seek ye first the kingdom. You have to please have faith in him. I'm talking to you, those who don't who don't know God. If you don't know God, ask God to come into your life right now. Ask Jesus Christ to be the Lord and Savior. Get connect with like-minded people who can teach you the word of God, word on word, verse on verse. Not hoop and holler, not a lot of Lord and noise, not a lot of commotion, but the word of God. The very spirit of God is the only thing that's going to set you free and may keep you free. Amen? Mm -hmm. Not the Constitution, not the laws of the land, not your favorite politician. Mm -hmm. They can't do nothing for you. But the word of God, that's what's one of the Where is that? You have to believe in his, him and his right. And he will reward you. His promise that he is a reward of them that diligently seek him. I, mean, I want to read a comment here. Mm -hmm. Okay? I'm just going to read you out. That's right. Stay focused on God and Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. As my dad always said, some people are going to talk about you no matter what you do. Amen, Carla. But then can't put you in heaven or hell. Jesus is our salvation and God provide for all our needs. Amen. Stay focused, people. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Carla. Amen. We appreciate that. Mm -hmm. We really appreciate that. That's so true. That is so true. Mm -hmm. So regardless of what they say on the propaganda ministry or television, ABC, NBC, CBS, and MSNBC, do not spend time there. Spend time in the Word. In the word okay? Spend time in the Word. Spend time in the Word of God for yourself. Because that's where the truth is. The rest is just a bold-faced lie. It's a talk show. It's a disgrace. All right? Seekly seek God. Okay? Verse, uh, let's go to Luke 17, 5. Go ahead and read that for me. Did I cover, did I cover everything on verse, um, okay. chapter 6? I mean, yes. verse 6? Yes, you did. Okay, and I just want to make sure I haven't misunderstood. There's no misunderstanding here. Yeah, it was clear. Okay. And the apostles said to the Lord, increase our faith. Verse 6 says, 
And the Lord said, If ye have faith as a grain of mustard seed, ye might say unto this sycamore tree, Be thou plucked up by the root, and be thou planted in the seed, and it should obey you. Can I get a witness on that? Amen. Here Christ is talking to an apostle, which is one of his disciples, mm -hmm. whom asked Jesus to increase his faith. And I'm quite sure many of you would say, Lord, please increase my faith. Mm -hmm. Lord, please, pastor, increase my faith. Pastor can't increase your faith. Apostle cannot increase your faith. The Pope cannot increase your faith. The Cardinals cannot increase your faith. Those false prophets can't increase your faith. And last, the Archbishop, and this is what the Patriarch. Okay, I have to remember to get the Patriarch. The Patriarch, which are the Eastern Orthodox League, equivalent to the Pope, cannot increase your faith. This is what the word, the, the Bible is telling us, amen, if we have faith of as small as a mustard seed. That's the kind of faith we need. As small as a mustard seed. Everybody know what a mustard seed looks like? See how tiny it is? Tiny. It does not require us to have such a giant faith as big as this cup of coffee. Or this box of tissue. Or this house size of this house. As small as a mustard seed. Jesus Christ made it so simple. It's a textbook worth reading over and over again. And I'm talking about Luke 17 and 5. You've got to read it over and over again. Mm -hmm. That parable alone is enough to increase your faith. And can I get a witness? Amen. The same kind of faith will give you strength to endure pain, <laughs> long suffering, persecution from your friends, and, and also from your job. And there's many brothers and sisters facing persecution in other countries, in other worlds. And matter of fact, in this country too, if you speak Jesus Christ in public, they arrest you for, for harassing people. It only takes a few atheists to complain. The police will come and say, and you're excited, either exciting a riot or disturbing the peace. And all you're doing is pre preaching the gospel. Especially standing up against what they believe. But we spiritually face we face spiritual warfare all the time. But that's the kind of faith we gotta have regardless, guys. We gotta have that kind of faith. It is that faith that's going to make us extraordinary people. Mm -hmm. If you want to live an extraordinary life, and you, you have to do extraordinary things, you have to have faith. That's the only way to win. I can tell you, point you where the greatest stock market explosion is going to be, and say, put your money right there, but if you don't have faith, it's not going to happen. That's for real. It said, okay, that's you. Yeah, amen. amen. I was I just reading some comments. Lord have mercy. Mm -hmm. That's true. Mm -hmm. You got for pastors being arrested in Canada and the United States. A lot of folks don't see that because the propaganda ministry of, of the, the known station that everybody watch between six, the, the 6 and 7 o'clock is not going to tell you that. The one that's on 24 hours a day, I'm not going to tell you that because they're antichrists. It's not my opinion. It's right there in front of you. All you have to do is look at the devil and see right there. They're not going to tell you these things. You have to go and look around. I watch, I'm on international forums, international news. I mean, Australia know more about us. Australia uh, knows more about us than we do about ourselves because propaganda ministry is not going to tell you. I was in civil affairs, guys. But anyway, those are the things that's going to make a difference. You see, Christ used parables to bring upon a spiritual understanding. Even with faith as small as a mustard seed, you can do all things in Christ Jesus. And I would believe that. You have to believe that. The same kind of faith will give you the strength to endure and do a lot of things. So take the jump. Take the leap of faith. Steve Holly, my fraternity brother, always say, take just jump. Jump. If God give you a vision to start a business, jump. If God give you an idea, jump. If God give you a book to write, jump. 
If God give you a recipe to share with others, jump. If God said that job is for you, jump. Just don't sit around and just wait for the by and by. Jump. Take the leaf of faith, guys. You don't have to be poor. You don't have to be broke. You don't have to be part of this generational curse that so many people put you on. You can receive what God has for you. All you have to do is get in position. That's it. Romans, and uh, we're approaching our last two pages. Romans chapter 9, verse 32. Sheila, would you read? Lord, I'm about to get excited. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Wherefore, because they sought it not by faith, but as it were by the works of the law, for they stumbled at it, that stumbling stone. Amen. Say it again, honey. Wherefore, because they sought it by, not by faith, but as it were by, by the works of the law, for they stumbled at the stumbling stone. That's right. Go to 10. Romans 10, 8. But what says it? The word is not deep, even in thy mouth and thy heart. That is the word of faith, which we preach. Amen. So what is God saying in verse 32? <coughs> what is he saying? Hmm? Anybody want to again? It said, so it's not by faith. But as we're by law, guys, the, the law been fulfilled. It's about faith. It's not about, because if you focus on, if you focus on just doing works for the sake of works, you will stumble. There's going to be a stumbling ministry if you just going to focus on works. Mm -hmm. If you focus on faith, faith is the focus and the what's the benefit of that you work because of your faith yes because you have faith that's why you do what you do when you're ushering because you have faith that's why you preach the good news you share as a disciple you share because you go out as a mission doing mission work as a mission we're all called we're the call outs guys mm -hmm. that's what a church is we're called out to share we call out to be in, get in trouble. Mm -hmm. I mean, our employers, if, we, if every Christian who calls themselves part of a church and actually live by the call out as defined by the word church, I don't find too many employers will be able to stop us. They said you can't be sharing the gospel here. If 80% of America who call themselves Christians share the gospel to one person, it be too many of them that even try to stop. Mm -hmm. So if we called out to do God's work, we got to do the work. We got to tell people. We got to share. It's not always. It's not about bringing in the walls. Once you share, you invite. They come into the walls, and that's when you introduce them to the pastor, or you tell them how the pastor set an appointment to come by and visit them. That's how it works. That's how mm -hmm. Paul did. But anyway. But, but also in verse 8, let's go to 10 and 8, and I want to reemphasize. But what says it? The word is nigh. Where is not? Deep. Even in the mouth, in the heart. The word of faith, which we preach. You see, the word of God is in you. Even in your mouth and in your mind. That's why we have study. In order to, to, to even increase our faith, as a Muslim, we've got to get in what? Study. We got to get into word. It's hard to believe something that you never study. It's hard to believe something you never research. It's hard to believe something that faith come by hearing and hearing by the word of God. It's faith when you don't even hear it. And who would be sent? You'd be sent by a preacher. The word of God, Jesus Christ, the word wrapped in flesh is in you. You have to just believe. If you're a believer and you confess the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior and you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart, you're, you're, you're saved. And all that you need to do is live in that saving grace, that umbrella by faith. Because when you're in within that umbrella, you're protected from those fiery darts that the Satan's people fire at you. 
But the moment you step out of that saving grace and you do your own thing, it's nothing I can do. You just stepped out the faith. So the key is stay in the faith. Regardless of what happened. So how, again, how do we hear? You can attend Bible study, just like we're doing now. Or attend um, Christian education or study. Or advanced study. All right? 2 Corinthians 5, 7. But we walk by faith, not by sight. Come on, man. Very basic biblical principles to guide us in our life. Mary, mother of Jesus statue, it's not going to do that. You walk by faith. That says it all right there. A reinforcement of faith. Your walk by faith is not by sight alone. It's by trust. You trust in Jesus. You trust in the word of God. You trust in his promises. Trust. You have to. Do you trust Jesus Christ? Do you trust his word? Do you have trust? Do you believe in what you heard so far? It's not. It, it's all based on Jesus Christ, who is the foundation of our faith. It's not physical, but spiritual. It has nothing to do with earthly thinking. Or earthly reasoning. Science is not going to get it. CDC is not going to get it. Dr. Fauci is not going to get it. You're only going to get this through the word. Mm -hmm. Galatians 2, 16, verse 17, please. Know that a man is not justified by the works of the law, but by the faith of Jesus Christ. Even we have believed in Jesus Christ, that we might be justified by the faith of Christ, and not by the works of the law. For the works of the law should not the works of the law, the works in your itineraries, the works that you do in your ministry, the works that you do for the federal government, the works that you do for your school, the works <clears throat> that you do for your employer, the works that you do in all your auxiliary within your ministry or with your church organization and your organized religion does not justify you. Says over here. Read it again to make sure they understand it, huh? Know that a man is not justified by the works of the law. Stop right there. We are not justified by the works of the law. We're not justified by our bylaws. We are not justified by the law. Okay? Go ahead. But by the faith in Jesus Christ, even we have believed in Jesus Christ, that we might be justified by the faith of Christ and not by the works of the law. Stop right there. Again, reinforcement. Reinforcement again and again and again. Galatians chapter 2, verse 16 through 17. Faith of Jesus Christ, I see that. Believe in Jesus Christ, I see that. Faith of Jesus, of Christ, I see that. Without all those three port elements, works of the law shall no flesh be justified. You, you, your whole organ, church organization, congregational organization, where you're a congregationist, a Catholic church, you're a Lutheran church, a Presbyterian church, a, 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 all these other things, you're not justified by the, by the, by the, by the they're not going to justify you. Only the, by Christ alone and Him crucified. Believe in Him, faith in Him. Would be and faith of Christ was the anointed one, which is another word for anointed one. Mm -hmm. Will you be justified? Mm -hmm. I cannot justify you. Your bishop cannot justify you. Your church organization, your 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 deacons, your chair, your clerk session, your state clerk session, your supreme court clerk session, your whole national organization cannot justify you. Only through Christ. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8 and 9, please. For by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourself, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Grace. For by grace are we saved. That grace took place on Calvary, Golgotha. It took place when Jesus died. That's the grace. 
that, that saved us through faith. Because you got to believe. You have to believe. I don't know a believer that's received grace. They don't believe in the, if you don't believe in the Redeemer, you don't believe in grace because he is the grace. Mm -hmm. So if you don't believe in Jesus Christ as the Lord and Savior, and you say he's nothing but a, a fairy tale, a storybook, then you're not saved. I hate this. I have to say this. You are not saved. Can I? Amen. Amen. Not of works. You can work 24 hours a day in that ministry. You can be vacuuming floors, buffing the shoes of your bishop. You can be pressing his clothes or her clothes. The works are not going to justify you. Mm -hmm. you're not, and you're boasting. Unless any man boast. They, Jesus already know that some people boast about how I just love my pastor and I will do this and I do that. You sound just like that Pharisee. You sound just like that Pharisee that, 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 that boasts about his tithing and, and how he does all these things. But guess what? Jesus said that man over there, because he said in that public, I'm glad I'm not like that publican over there. That publican said, Lord, have mercy on a sinner like me. Who's justified? The publican or the what? The sinner. The, 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 um, well, the, the Republican acknowledged himself as a sinner, mm -hmm. but the Pharisee, is the Pharisee justified or the publican? That individual who humbled himself, that publican over there, that was considered an outcast by the Jewish sect, he was justified. Why? By faith, because he believed. He acknowledged Jesus Christ. He acknowledged his faults. He acknowledged his sins. And he said, Lord, forgive me. Have mercy. He said, have mercy on a sinner like me. He went home. Jesus said to the, to, he said, he went home justified. Mm -hmm. Did he not? Look it up. It's in the book. Tell me the church is not just a building. The church is the body of Christ. If you say you're Christian, you are the church. And that's exactly right, Carolyn. Why? Because the church is people who are born again believers, mm -hmm. not the building. Okay. We just go, the church is a place where the church, the building is where the church meets. Mm -hmm. yes. Because that's where we're all assembled. Yeah. Amen? It's our job is to set example of Jesus Christ and his God. That's right, Amen. Carolyn. Amen. That's exactly right. And we need every born again believer, whether you'll be a born again believer or not, they need this teaching. People need this. <coughs> Excuse me. Do I have a comment on any comment, honey? The world needs you. The world is in darkness right now. The world is in sin right now. The world is lost. There's more darkness on this land than ever before. So this the, if the picking is just right for us to witness his saving grace. It's by grace that we are saved. It is by grace that we receive the righteousness of God. It is by grace, though we don't, don't deserve it, that we can be redeemed. All we have to do is accept His same grace. And then we become the church of Jesus Christ. Not the church, Baptist church. Not the Catholic church. No, we become the church of Jesus Christ. And that's, and that's it. Mm -hmm. Ephesians chapter... Have we already we already read um we did, six, two. Okay, thank you. Above we got all, two more two more scriptures. Above all, take the shield of faith, uh huh, wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery dots of the wicked. Amen. See, by faith in Jesus Christ, who is the word in you, will protect you from the fiery dart of the wicked. Mean harmful words from the worldly thinking of people. People are gonna talk about you, they're gonna persecute you, they're gonna say, Why? Especially you young. Why do you need to go to church? Why, why are you assembling? Why are you going to where the church meet? Why are you hanging out with them? You should be hanging out with us. Why are you not? Uh, you, you don't hang out with us anymore. You don't drink with us anymore. You don't smoke with us anymore. When you are in Christ, what? You what? You are a new creature. All things are passed away. All things are made what? New. Brand new to God to be the glory. I'm telling you, some people will talk about you regardless of what you do. 
and try to convince you to quit to, uh, to drop Christ. They want to dampen your walk with Christ. But I'm encouraging you to hold on, guys. We'll separate yourself to the best of your ability from these type of walks of darkness. Mm -hmm. Separate. I have to separate myself. I have a lot of people who I consider my a great associate, great friends, or people I have serving in arms together, people who are my fraternity brothers, my sorority sisters. Many of them still live in worldly life. And that's like, I cannot be part of that. I had to separate from their ways. I had to separate from them until they come to an understanding of Christ. Every time they see me, they will get an understanding of Christ. Every time they see me, they're going to hear a word of God. I don't care. If you come to me, you're going to hear it. You're going to hear the gospel. That's the truth. If you don't want to hear it, keep it moving. I think a lot of people separate themselves from us because of what we're doing. The moment we come about the Christ, the, the darkness don't want to even comprehend, can't even comprehend life. But that's just the way it is, guys. Young people, you're going to face ob, ob, you know, objections from your friends, rejection from your friends. You're going to face rejection from your public schools because your public schools is, is, has gone worldly. Uh-oh, we got a lost signal. Oh, have mercy. I think Facebook is trying to tell me something. Well, you're starting to upset my friend, my inclusive diversity and quality. <laughs> How dare you? I say, I, I beseech you against the, in the name of Jesus. Mm -hmm. Get back to playing right. <laughs> I, and I can't bind it, but I said, Jesus Christ, bind the evil spirit of Facebook and we hold, hold them down for just a little bit longer. We got one more yes, we got one more scripture, guys. I'm sorry about the bad signal. But Satan is, is working because I'm getting on his nerves. Mm -hmm. Lucifer doesn't like me anyway. He already had me out. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 5, our last scripture and topic to discuss. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 5, oh, one Lord, one faith, one baptism. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about that. <laughs> what do we mean by one Lord, one faith, one baptism? The word of God made it plain. Mm -hmm. We live by one Lord. It's the Father, the Son, the Holy Ghost, one faith, one baptism. I and believe that our God is one in three persons. I believe in the gospel of Jesus Christ, who is the author of our faith. I believe the baptism of fire according to the gospel of John. Fire represents the Holy Spirit, the word of, of the living God. Yep. And we're going to really look into that Holy Spirit. In our next lesson, one of our next lessons, maybe not soon, but maybe later, because people need to understand what the Holy Spirit really is. Mm -hmm. There's different variants that's being taught, and uh, we'll touch we'll touch on that. But guys, hey, this has been a great class. You know, I mean, we really talked, had a great discussion. I just want to read Carlin's comment. That's right. We are justified by our faith by God's grace. Too many people going to the church building worried about their titles or position. That's right. Mm -hmm. Boasting about what they do, better stop playing, people. Amen. Triple amen. I'm gonna give you a triple. Hey, amen. I'll clap my hand. I'll clap my hand on you for that, Carolyn. That's a great job, and that's a great. That tell me the, the great understanding. And I'm telling you, you've been around. You were raised with a great, great father, a great pastor, a great mother, who has taught you some wonderful biblical um, truth in preparing you for your walk with Jesus Christ. And I just thank God for you for that. Um, I always knew you had that in you. Amen. And Valerie too. Amen, Calvin. And uh, we continue to lift him up in prayer. Hopefully I hear from him soon. But if not, that's okay. He know where to find me. But praise God on the lesson for today. And, and those who are just chiming in or may chime later on, um, leave a comment, share, share my post, share this. I mean, this is a great, great lesson on faith. This is a great topic. I mean, we share everything else outside of God. And we make everybody else algorithm very famous, but we want to share a simple topic of faith that we share right here, humbly, right from here in Chester, Virginia. I'm not an actor. I'm not a comedian. I'm not a football player. I'm not one of those guys you see on CBS, NBC, CB, and the NBC, MSNBC, or CNN. But I am a child of God who loves you enough to share truth, as my wife and my sister Carolyn have done. So, guys, share. Please share, because this stuff can change your life. 
Word of God is the only thing that's going to change you. I can't change you. God will change you. But you have to trust <coughs> enough to get into this word. And once you get into the word, you see so many fabulous things in it. Fabulous in life and stories that will just blow your mind. It will put soap opera to a shame. It will put action stories that you see on TV to, a, to the behind you. And guys, you will see, it will put all the news stations out of business. Amen. Maybe put some hospitals out of business. But anyway, guys, love you all. Thank you so much for chiming in. And uh, this is Reverend Dr. Antonio Allen and my wife, Sheila. Any last words, Sheila? Romans 8, 28. And we know that Get your all coffee. things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are called according to his purpose. Amen. Romans 8, 28. Amen. Amen. To God be the glory. Amen, Carolyn. Amen, Carolyn. Thank and she you. said, I'm, I'm still learning. And you're still, yes, you're still learning. Yes, yes, yes. And you had some great teachers of the faith uh, who prepared you. Matter of fact, your father, as well as a number of other people, was part of the influence of my life that prepared me to be the man that you see today. Uh, but it, that's right. They can't get you in heaven. You have to make that choice. You have to live the righteousness of God. To get there. I'm grateful for my own relationship with God. Amen. Amen. I'm definitely in agreement with that. Yeah. We got a wrong to kind of teaching that a lot of people believe that, you know, their grandmother can pray their way up the way to heaven. Oh, it's my uncle's church or my father's church that's gonna get me there. But that's not true. I already read the scriptures on you what's the the requirements have already been read out to you mm -hmm. through the scriptures. You can always um re refer back to those scriptures, just play the tape the video back. Go to the scriptures, go to the word of God, and digest yourself in it, and you see for yourself. Anyway, final analysis, God bless you, God and bless thank you. you so much for chiming, and may heaven smile upon you. This is again, Reverend Dr. Antonio Arnold, and my wife, Sheila. You want to say a prayer? Thank you for Yeah, we can pray. Uh -huh. Let's pray. Father Jehovah, we, come, we thank you once again for this lesson on faith. We thank you, Lord God, for teaching us. It is impossible to please you without faith. Without faith, it's impossible to please you. So, Lord, we ask that we that more and more people have faith, that they will pray, that they will seek you, Lord. Your word said, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and turn from their wicked ways and seek my faith, Lord, we're seeking your faith. We, we turn from our wicked ways and we want to hear from you, Lord. Mm -hmm. We want to walk with you, Lord. We want to walk with you, Lord, be a right stand on that good, good enough day when the, when the trumpets are blown. Mm -hmm. We want to wake up and say, yes! Lord, we thank you! Mm -hmm. Lord, I'm praying for all my brothers and sisters around the world who are being persecuted where near and far because of their faith. I'm praying, Lord, that, that you will be by their side. Whether it be also, Lord, for those who are sick and sudden, those who are having terminal diseases. My, this, my, my, I'm also looking, praying for my sister, who, who's 96 years old. And if any one of her followers are watching, let them never know that we're praying for her as well. Mm -hmm. Heal her, Lord. Deliver from her, from her pain. And Lord, please forgive her for any iniquities that she may have done in her past. Mm -hmm. And Lord, look, she believes. Mm -hmm. And all my brothers and sisters who believe by faith. And Lord, we also believe, Lord, that you would set things back in motion where what your righteousness has required of all humankind around the world. And all we have to do is believe, have faith. Mm -hmm. Seek ye faith first the kingdom. And Lord, we thank you for our business opportunities. We thank you for our investments. We thank you for our home. We thank you for the food on the table. Bless the hand that prepared it. Let there be food for the hungry that's, that's there in the nations that facing famine right now. I pray, for, pray that rain would come, the sufficient amount of rain that would break the cycle of drought, not just in other countries, but in this country too. <coughs> western part of the Pacific, Lord. I'm praying on the western Pacific of the country, western part of the country will turn from their wicked ways and seek God's faith so God can let it rain once again. Rivers are drying up. Lakes are drying up. Lord, 
People are called by my name. That's all I keep hearing. And they humble themselves and pray. Washington, D.C., the political bureaus of the Democrat Party. If they're my people who are called by my name, will humble themselves and pray. Lord, they that brought homosexuality, perversion, transgenderism, abortion, to kill an un, a, a, a life that you haven't allowed to grow. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and turn from their wicked ways. Lord God, we just humbled ourselves and praying to you, Lord. We're praying to you, Lord. And we're asking for redemption, Lord. We're asking for forgiveness, Lord. Lord, if if thou a thousand people, uh, would you not destroy it? Would you not forgive us, Lord? If a thousand people who are righteous, would you not, do not destroy the land? Lord, if 500 are righteous, would you not destroy the land? If 10 were righteous people who are left, would you not destroy the land? Lord, we come before you as Abraham had called us before you, Lord. Have mercy, Lord. Don't destroy us, Lord. But Lord, whatever you have written, let it be fulfilled according to your will. And Lord, let us be not be let us be in right standing before you. Help us, Lord, in our areas of weakness. Make us strong in our areas of strength. Strengthen us to do right, great righteousness, Lord. Strengthen us to come together in righteousness to seek ye first the kingdom of heaven. And everything will be added unto us. We're not going to worry about our finances. We're not going to worry about our business. We're going to continue on. We're going to continue to proclaim. We're going to continue to share and let everyone make the decision. And we pray they make the right decision, Lord. And Lord, we ask for traveling grace for all those on the highways, flying, on the trains, on the road, bicycles, walking. Lord, protect them from harm and danger. Protect them from being shootouts and shooting in Chicago. And Lord, we're praying for the people of Chicago, Richmond, all the major cities around the world. Lord, let their peace be still, Lord. And we call it all done, Lord. We thank you for hearing our prayers. We thank you for the lessons that you have inspired us to give. We thank you for all those who have purpose to be here. And we call it all joy. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Amen, amen. God bless you. Bless you. And may have a smile upon you. Yes.